So basically, ever since the electron was discovered, scientists have understood that light could be thought of as moving waves, and they have given frequencies, speeds, and wavelengths. So this wavelength of light can be anywhere from 10 to the 5th meters, which is like 100,000 meters in between waves, all the way down to 10 to the negative 13. And this very broad range of wavelengths makes up the electromagnetic spectrum. And you can see that here, this whole electromagnetic spectrum. Now part of this electromagnetic spectrum is what we can see, the visible spectrum, just this little tiny bit down here. And within that visible spectrum are the colors of light that we're used to, the colors of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And so in your notes, hopefully you have labeled the wavelengths there. Red has a wavelength of 700 nanometers, nanometer meaning 10 to the negative 9. And then between yellow and orange, about 600 nanometers, green around 500, and violet over there at 400. Now we can also see that we have different energies associated with the wavelengths of light. If you look to the right of red, you see infrared, and microwaves, and radio waves. Those are all things that are very common around us and not very harmful. On the other side of violet, we see ultraviolet, x-rays, and this little squiggly thing is gamma rays. And those are all much higher energy, much more harmful things to us. So you can see that as far as energy is concerned, Red light has a very, has much lower energy as opposed to violet light. We can also see here red light has a longer wavelength. And if you remember, wavelength is the distance between the crest, the top of the waves, and it's symbolized by a lambda. Violet light has a much smaller wavelength. Frequency is how often the waves go past you, so essentially red light are slower moving than violet light, so that's why their frequencies are like that. Now that's just a little background information. So how does this tie into the atom? Well, remember that the atoms are in their ground state, the state of lowest energy, and that's where they would like to be. However, we can make them get out of that. We can make electrons jump to higher energies. They don't like it, so they come back down. When they come back down, they emit that energy, and oftentimes it is in the form of visible light. Flip on a switch, and you can see that happen in a fluorescent light tube. Well, what we noticed then, and this is how you know Bohr discovered the energy levels in the atom, we noticed that each element emits a different color of light. And if we get even more into that, if we send the light through a prism, we see a very distinct pattern of lines, an atomic emission spectrum. And every single element's emission spectrum is very unique and different. Why do we suppose that is so? Well, because every element, every element's atoms has a different ground state. No element has the same amount of electrons as another element. And so since there's a different ground state, there'll be different jumps, those quantum leaps, that these electrons will take, and so we'll see different patterns of light coming out of them. And so we see here that the atomic emission spectrum of an element is the set of the electromagnetic waves emitted by the atoms of that element. and. Uh, we'll see them as colored lines. So each element's atomic emission spec spectrum is unique, and oftentimes you'll hear them called like the fingerprints of the element. And in that forensic file we watched, that girl had um, lead poisoning, lead in her hair, and so they were able to do spectroscopy and see that indeed lead was present in her system because of the spectrum that only lead gives off. Here is hydrogen's emission spectrum, the one that started it all and how Bohr found that the atom has energy levels. So again, here's a look inside the atom. And
remember hydrogen's electron configuration is 1s1. That electron wants to be in the lowest energy position down on energy level 1. And you see that down here, n equals 1. So when we add energy to hydrogen, either in the form of heat or electricity, we make that electron jump up, and it can go to any different energy level. When that electron comes back down, if it comes all the way back down to energy level 1, that's a big energy difference. And that's why you see down there ultraviolet wavelengths, high energy. If the electron only drops a little less, like if it goes from energy level 3 down to energy level 2, then it's going to emit this red line that we see at 656 nanometers. If it goes from energy level 4 to 2, then we see the green line. 5 to 2, blue, and 6 to 2, purple. And you can see as the energy jumps get a little bigger, then the energy, the color of the light reflects that energy. If the jumps are way smaller, then we have infrared light given off, which again, we wouldn't be able to see. So the spectrum in your notes is looks a little more like this. So this is the emission spectrum for hydrogen. Again, if you go further in chemistry, this is studied much more heavily. But every time light given off from hydrogen passes through a prism, these four lines will always be seen. A purple line at 410 nanometers, a blue line at 434 nanometers, a green line at 486 nanometers, and a red line at 656 nanometers. And again, this proves that we have energy levels in the atom because we have a very specific type of light, a specific energy of light being emitted. And so therefore, it proves that it's not just randomly around the nucleus. It's in a very specific energy spot. So when we're doing the flame test lab, we see a color given off by the element, but if we were able to pass that light through a prism, we would also see the emission spectrum. So for example, sodium is a very orangish, yellowish color when in the flame. And so we see the blending of those lines, but when you pass it through a prism, you would see sodium's atomic emission spectrum. And yes, there's a little green line in there and a little reddish-orange line, but the yellow and orange are the most pronounced, and that's what our eyes see. Barium, we see a yellowish-greenish, and you can see a lot more lines on barium's emission spectrum. Sodium only has 11 electrons. Barium has 55. So there's a lot more jumps, a lot more quantum leaps, a lot more possibilities for spectral lines in barium. But you can see, even though there's some red and some blue over on the right-hand side, predominant amount of orange, yellow, green lines. So that gives us the color of barium that we see in the flame test lab. So that kind of sums up the whole light aspect of the atom. And that concludes the notes packet. Thank you.